In this video, we'll go over the anatomy and technique for blocking the genicular nerves. These nerves are often treated in the pain clinic for chronic osteoarthritic pain, but for our purposes, we're going to look at how to target them preoperatively to reduce acute pain after total knee arthroplasty. You may be wondering, wait, another block for total knees? We're already doing an adductor canal and an IPAC, right? Well, the rationale for blocking these has to do with the way the knee is innervated. So let's take a brief look at that. Here we have the knee joint in its capsule, posterior on the left, anterior on the right. The sciatic nerve descends from the thigh, splitting into the tibial and common peroneal nerves. There are three principal genicular nerves that we're after. The first is the superior lateral, which arises from the peroneal nerve and winds around the lateral metaphysis to innervate part of the anterior lateral periosteum and capsule. The superior medial genicular nerve comes off the tibial nerve and travels close to the adductor tubercle before innervating part of the anterior medial knee joint. And then we have the inferior medial genicular, which also comes off the tibial and travels around to the anterior aspect of the proximal tibia, innervating part of the anterior medial knee. These three nerves are going to be the focus of our technique. Now, there are other nerves that innervate the joint capsule. For example, the inferior lateral genicular nerve and the recurrent peroneal nerve both supply the inferior lateral joint structures, but we typically don't target these because of the risk of inadvertently blocking the common peroneal nerve. Nobody thanks you for excellent knee analgesia in a patient who can't go home because of transient foot drop. To complete the nerve supply of the knee, we also have this saphenous nerve, as well as the articular branches from the three heads of the vastus group, medialis, intermedius, and lateralis. These all play a role in supplying the joint capsule, and of course, we do get the saphenous and medial vastus nerve with our adductor canal block, which we discuss in a different video. Finally, looking again at the back of the knee, there are fibers from the tibial and obturator nerves that form the popliteal plexus. This supplies the back of the knee joint and is a target of the IPAC block. Okay, so let's get back to our three genicular nerves. The technique involves using ultrasound to visualize the bony anatomy of the knee joint and then depositing local anesthetic at each of these three locations. We also block the nerve to vastus intermedius just above the knee as well. It's in a reliable location just anterior to the femoral shaft and it's easy to target while you're doing the geniculars. Here are the probe positions for the three genicular nerve blocks. For the two superior nerves, the probe is angled at 45 degrees so that you're catching the anterior lateral and anterior medial femur. In each case, the needle is advanced toward the knee joint. Here's the probe and needle position for blocking the nerve to vastus intermedius. You're looking for the hyperechoic line of the femur as it flares up to become the epicondyle. A useful landmark is the small genicular artery that can often be seen right where the femur starts to slope up, although it's not always visible. The genicular nerves are quite small, and for that reason we don't try to visualize them on ultrasound. Instead, the needle is directed to contact bone at the bottom of the slope in the general vicinity of the artery. Here's the needle passing through the muscle and tendon of vastus medialis. Five mils of local anesthetic easily lifts off the soft tissue and spreads along the periosteum. The approach for the two superior genicular nerves is identical and just a mirror image of each other. Here's the approach for the inferior medial nerve. The probe is on the anterior medial tibia, and the genicular artery is usually easily seen. A needle is advanced from the caudad aspect until bony contact is felt, and then 5 mils of local anesthetic deposited here. Here's the block for nerve to vastus intermedius. The probe is transverse a few finger breadths above the patella, and 5 mils of local is placed on the femoral shaft right at 12 o'clock. These investigators did a cadaver study to determine feasibility of genicular blocks and found that 4 mils of quarter percent pipivacaine resulted in excellent spread that more than covered the appropriate area. Genicular blocks are easy to do, and in our practice we've seen a reduction in postoperative opioids over the first 48 hours using bupivacaine with some dexamethasone. Here are some things we've learned along the way. The artery is not always visible, but if you target the bone at the bottom of the slope, that gets you in the right location. The in-plane technique can be challenging sometimes, and for that reason, the out-of-plane is a great alternative. Same probe position, same ultrasound image, just be sure to come down very steep to contact the bone at the same location. We've made this a zero-cost technique by using the remainder from the vial of half percent pipivacaine we've just used for the spinal block, and we use the same block syringe and needle we just used for the IPAC block. We want to maximize the effect of the block, and so using a good dose of pipivacaine here makes sense.